What up? My name's Dayton. Welcome to my channel, Dayton Does Stuff. And today, I'm going to do something really scary. I'm going to bring out one of my old short stories from like two years ago. And then I'm going to show you a new short story I've written. Just the beginnings of both. And then I'm going to talk about what I've done in the last two years uh, to improve. And this is going to be really scary. Uh, let's get started. So the two stories I'm going to read for you are actually the same story written three years apart. They're both surrounding this really creepy fucking dream I had that happened maybe two months after my mom passed away. The first one I called Wheatgrass. It starts, standing in a field alone, or at least alone in my mind. Ooh. Every which way I seem to look is a field filled with tall wheatgrass. It's a bit desolate, but it has its own sort of peace of mind. The grass alive in the wind, but aside from that, all is at ease. I begin to walk until I find what happens to be a deck without a house. I remember this deck being attached to a house I lived in as a kid. It just sat with no legs on the ground, almost completely hidden by the tall bundles of gold and yellow. As I get closer, I notice a man sitting legs folded in the middle of the deck, a meek man, older and dressed very casually, with a frantic glow about him that seemed to draw me towards him. Ooh, okay, I have to stop. Let's read the second iteration. This one's called, That House is Fucking Haunted. That house is fucking haunted, I told her, pointing to a small neighborhood on the hill as we drove through the town I'd grown up in. It was a lot bigger now, maybe quintupled in size since I was young. It was fun to talk about how bullshit it is that small towns get big. I didn't really care. After all, we're all going to die someday. Best not to get worked up over little things like how big towns get. Still. It's fun to complain about things. We'd been driving for an hour and a half, and things were coming to a, that hair-raising time of night. I was a little worried, not worried about ghosts or anything like that. No, just worried I was swearing too much, and that my stories were, on a whole, a little, mu a little too much darker than hers. she just finished telling me a story involving butterflies and lighthouses and hope, my last story involved an alcoholic brother and a bachelor party to strip club. Okay, I'm going to cut it there. Uh, these are clearly, one is very immature writing, and one is more mature writing. It'll get better over time still, but for now, it's miles better than this. Okay, so now let me talk a little bit about how I got from uh, this piece of shit story to this passable piece of writing. Over the last couple of years, I have done a few, th well, I've done a bunch of stuff. I'm a, I, I really do enjoy learning to the point where I look like a fucking crazy person. My favorite, favorite, favorite thing in the world is Masterclass. It's just a fuckload of really smart people teaching how they do it. Uh, the ones I'm taking right now, I've just finished uh, the one on poetry, one on short stories. David Sedaris is doing one on uh, humor and writing, which I am so fucking excited about. Margaret Atwoods was amazing. She wrote Handmaid's Tale. If you don't know about her, she is the smartest person in the world. It's crazy. Masterclass is amazing because really it's looking at someone who's successful and when you look at multiple masters in the craft and pick and choose things you like and dislike from how they do it, you form your own style. So Masterclass in that way has made me, forced me to create my own style by being like, ooh, I kind of like how David Baldacci writes. I, ooh, I love how Margaret Atwood builds a world. I like how Dan Brown plans it. I really like how David Mamet uh, has a free flowing and he's just focuses on making the beginning something that is sustainable. Uh, I like how R.L. Stein simplifies things and makes writing easy. Finding what you like and dislike from masters of the craft will create your own style. Uh, I did go out of my way to be able to sell Masterclass and I will put a link below uh, if you're thinking at all about getting it. 
uh, please go through that link because I'll get 50 bucks. Next thing that's helped my writing immensely, Scribafile. Now, on Scribafile, you edit people's works uh, and you do maybe a six, uh, anywhere four to six hundred. I've done fifteen hundred word critiques. And the more words that you give, the more points you get. I've got one point five points. You need five points uh, to post your writing. When you post your writing, it gets critiqued because you have to critique to post. Your posted work is going to get critiqued. It just will. I've had five or six critiques before. These critiques are super in-depth. Everything is just riddled with help. It's amazing. Everything in green is stuff that he wrote in line. If you're not a writer, find some way that you can critique each other's works. Give your peers advice and get advice from them and take it. Use the advice. Even if you aren't sure or don't really like the advice, use it. It will help, I swear. Next thing that's helped is I put everything through Pro Writing Aid. Pro Writing Aid is an artificial intelligence. It's an AI that checks my writing. At first, you start to learn that, oh, I'm just bad at writing. As you use an AI, you really, really quickly clue in to what the textbook way of doing something is. And that just makes you more professional on all counts. Uh, link below to Pro Writing Aid. Everyone should use it because it checks your emails and makes you sound like not a fucking idiot. So that's below. Big reasons I like it is it's not a monthly subscription. It's a one-time payment. Basically, you run different reports. I like the style, the grammar, the overused, the readability and sticky are probably the you know ones I use almost exclusively. Oh, and the consistency check. One thing I really like is also it teaches you as you go. If I don't understand why they're giving me that suggestion, you can click there and just uh, take a quick read. Very easy. And over time, all of my mistakes have just been going down and down the more that I use this. So uh, Pro Writing Aid really has upped my shit. Uh, the last thing that I really, really dig uh, and has helped me get from my piece of shit writing to a semi-passable level is Readsy Learning. This is a place that just puts out helpful content, and they do it in the form of email mini courses. At any point in time, I'm doing at least one of these Readsy courses. Now, again, if you're not a writer, I encourage you to find some email chain or some thing that reminds you once a day to learn something. Uh, like Duolingo. I, when I was learning French, it reminds you once a day. Be like, hey, here's a little thing. It, so in that way, the main idea is to make learning less scary by chopping it up and doing it once a day for like five minutes. You know, I when I wake up in the morning, in bed, a lot of times I'll read my Readsy course for the day, and it's very easy. And you get better in little bits and pieces. To recap, the four things that have really helped me are Masterclass, Scribafile, Pro Writing Aid, and Readsy. So I hope that video was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, uh, and please uh, comment. Let me know what the fuck is going on. If you'd like to see more videos like this, uh, it, what you liked or disliked about the video, I really do want to know. Uh, and I hope that helps. Thanks, guys.